My name is uh, Paul Taylor. Okay, Mr. Taylor, nice to meet you. Um, you are not a resident of Greenleaf, are you? I think I... No, I'm not a resident of Greenleaf. Right. What is your connection to this community? Well, actually, um, I'm the honorary mayor of uh, Southwest Washington, D.C., particularly okay. this community here. I was actually uh, raised in Southwest in the Greenleaf Gardens uh, townhouse, I mean apartment, in oh. 1200 Delaware Avenue, Southwest. Okay. And so what I do is I spend majority of my time down here in Southwest just giving back. Mm. And also, I'm an employee at the King Greenleaf Recreation Center, which is located on the Greenleaf property. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you for those details. Let me just get a little background, if I can. Where did you go to school? Well, first I went to South Fax. Uh, from South Fax, I went to Amadon Elementary School. And from Amadon Elementary School, I went to Anthony Bourne. And from Anthony Bourne, I went to Jefferson. And from Jefferson Junior High School, I went to Woodrow Wilson High School. Okay. And um, what, so you grew up in Greenlee. Yes. What are your impressions of this community? Well, I mean, uh, what I've taken from this community, my impression of this community, I mean, it's, it's, it's one of a kind. Uh, you have people who have money and you have people who don't have money. You have low income, you have middle income, and you have high income. And being a product of this community actually allowed me to see, you know, people with money, how they live. Uh, me and my friends, uh, we used to take uh, orders at the Safeway. And, you know, the people with the money actually used to give us a uh, change to take their orders maybe to their cars. Or they actually used to let us uh, come to their houses or to their apartment and, and actually uh, bring the groceries in there. And so you can, you know, as a kid, I can actually see the distinguish between my apartment, which was located in 1200 in low income housing, and the apartments that was located maybe in River Park or Capitol Park. And it was always my dream, you know, once I made, got, up, got old enough to move out, that I was going to move in River Park. What do you think are some of the strengths and the good things about this community? Uh, uh, the strengths is you have all nationalities, uh, not like in some parts of Southeast and Northeast, where a lot of my friends, where they just grew up with a bunch of people that look like them. Uh, growing up in Southwest, you know, I went to Am Amazon, which we had Asian descent, we have uh, people from all nationalities. And having an opportunity to go to Woodrow Wilson, which was the Southwest area school, you know, you had dignitaries, kids going there, you had, uh, I mean, you had the whole conglomerate. And so being exposed to that environment really helped to shape me who I am. Uh, because what I do is try to t bring my kid about the shadow and take him to different uh, events where uh, you might, I might take him to the Shakespeare Theater which, you know, normally a kid from the low-income housing really don't get that experience. And, you know, you don't see a lot of people that look like me at these events. So just get a, a little culture shock. Uh, but growing up in Southwest, you know, I was used to being around uh, different nationalities. So I feel comfortable no matter who in the world. Like and um, do you recall various sorts of community celebrations or um, what were some of the ways in which people come together and express their sense of belonging and the ways in which they're united? Well, one of the, the biggest things was uh, the Southwest Community House, which is a house where the majority of the low-income families went. You know, if, if they didn't have food, uh, you're looking for a job, uh, they get uh, referrals. Uh, they used to sponsor uh, a Family Day event, which was called uh, Southwest Family Day. Uh, this event, which was located in Lansbury Park, and as a kid, you know, all the kids in the neighborhood looked forward to the event because everything was free. And growing up, you know, in a household where, you know, you just didn't go in the refrigerator because you, you could, you know, it was, you, you know, don't go in my refrigerator. So having the opportunity to eat how many hamburgers you want, drink how many sodas you want, and just having that day, you know, the kids in the community look forward to it. And uh, and so seven years ago, actually that event so somehow just disappeared. And so what we did was a group of us who grew up in the neighborhood, we decided to come together and uh, bring back this event. Uh, I am the executive director of the Southwest Community Forum, which is made up of, of individuals who grew up in the community, and some of us still stay in the community. And what we, do, what we did was bring that old Southwest family, they feeling back to the community. And so where the kids can come out and uh, eat for free, they get uh, carnival rides, and, and that's a sense of uh, community. Uh, and the name of the organization is Southwest. Come, 
hyphen unity. So it's about it's about unity. It's just not the low income residents that we actually target. We also target you know people who's living in Capitol Park, living in River Park, because a lot of those uh, organizations actually help donate. They actually donate and be a part of this. So you mentioned that things had gone away and you brought them back. What was a part of the erosion? What was happening in that gap? Why did something like that? Um, not exist and that you had to bring it back? Well, I think it, 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 it had to do with uh, financial. Uh, you, you didn't have too many leaders in the community uh, with the drugs that was taking place, you know, the crack epidemic that went on. Uh, uh, the Southwest House actually closed down uh, some years ago through, through some, uh, you know, that went through some uh, changes. Uh, so we no longer have the Southwest House. And so a, a lot of things played a part. It's just that you know, my thing was just trying to get those who grew up in the community to come back to give back, to let the kids and the families know that, hey, I grew up in this apartment, I made it out, that you can do the same thing. And so, it, I mean, it's, it's taking a life on its own, and I mean, the event just last, just uh, in August the 24th, August the 30th, I believe I had it, uh, we had over 1,500 people to show up. I mean, you had families that grew up here in the, the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s. They come back, you know, share their experience with their childhood friends who they went to, you know, elementary school, high school with. Uh, you know, when we first started, a lot of people had a lot of negativity about it because there's so much shooting going on in the neighborhood. And so, you know, when you don't experience it yourself and you're hearing it from a third-hand person, you know, it, it kind of, you know, misinformation get out there. And so a lot of people this year got to experience it for themselves. And uh, we, we got nothing but kudos. Uh, and so, um, yeah, th and that's that's my main objective is to get the, you know, a lot of us that grew up in the Southwest area to come back to let the kids know that, look, you can make it out, I made it out. What's the secret to your success? That sounds like a very successful event, 1,500 people. Well, the secret is is that um, actually taking, taking me taking ownership of it because I can sit and I can visualize uh, the type of event that I want. And what I went through some lumps and bruises because you have a lot of kids, you have the social media now, where they get on Facebook and you have these kids from different neighborhoods. You have kids from Southwest, you know, they get up on there and say, well, meet me at Southwest Day. You have these little crews that, you know, they want to fight and do these things. And so I went through a stumbling block four years ago where I had a kid come down to the event, he had a gun on him. And he shot three times in the air. And uh, it just so happened, it was, it was away from the event. Uh, but a lot of people, at the majority of people at the event never knew it took place. Uh, and so I had an a, a, a inkling that I didn't want to do the event anymore because it was taking on the wrong type of, bringing the wrong type of crowd. Uh, I didn't think that the people were actually enjoying themselves, to, you know, having a sense of unity and community. You know, it was about, you know, who's the baddest crew in the neighborhood. and. And so I, 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 I had to sleep on it. And actually I came up with a bright idea to say, well, I'm gonna move it from Greenleaf uh, Recreation and I'm gonna put it back in Landsberg Park where we actually started at. And so what I had to do, I had to change the name. I no longer call it Southwest Day. Uh, what I call it is Summer in Landsberg. And what it does, it took some of the sting out of it because you know a lot of the Southwest kids take ownership of the Southwest name. And so by me coming up with some in Landsberg, a lot of the kids, if you put it on social media, they don't even know what Landsberg Park is. And I'm glad that we actually have an opportunity to talk about, you know, Southwest and Greenleaf in particular, because a lot of kids don't know the history. And if I, I can go out here right now today and ask a 10 year old, where's Landsberg Park? And he might just live right across the street from the park and don't even know, don't know the history of it. And so, uh, you know, so I make it summer in Landsberg, so some of the people that grew up in this, in Southwest, they can come back and actually look at the park where they grew up at. You know, you still have some murals on the wall in the back of the mall of the park where pe people who was in their 60s and 50s who actually painted those murals in the back of the park mall. What do you feel is missing from this community? Leadership, you know, within the, uh, the community itself. Me, I no longer live, I don't live in the community, but I do have a voice. But if, you know, if my thing is, you know, trying to get all the uh, community uh, resident council presidents on one accord, I think it's a lot of misinformation, 
in a lot of eyes instead of them being as one as a whole. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing that's missing because in numbers you can make changes, but if you think you know James Creek is better than King Greenleaf Gardens or South Ash God is better than uh, 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 Greenleaf Extension, you know I mean we have to get out that mindset. I think that the resident councils of all the low-income housing properties in Southwest need to get on one accord. What is your sense of the relationship between the outside community, the larger community outside of Greenlee and Greenlee? You know, people of different class backgrounds and racial ethnic backgrounds. What is the relationship? How do they all get along? Is there unity or is there division? There, I, there's a division. And um, as a kid, you know, I, I, I seen the division, but I wasn't going to allow that to stagnate me. Um, and I think what happens is when uh, you're actually not, um, if you don't eat at the table with a certain ethnic group, there's something wrong with them. But uh, going to, Af going to uh, Amadon and Jefferson and Wilson, it actually allowed me to know that that because you don't look like me, you know, you're still human. I mean, uh, I think in, in the community as a, as a whole, you know, they just, uh, just uh, had a playground project right by the library. And actually, I see white kids, you know, on the swings with black kids. And uh, it's just that a, a lot of ignorance goes goes along with the adults. Um, I think in Southwest, you know, you, I, I just walked past uh, Third Street and I closed my eyes just for a moment. Third and, what's that? Third and, uh, Third Street. I closed my eyes for a moment and just opened them right back up. I didn't know that I was in low income housing because the manicure lawns that I actually seen, it was five five or six houses in a row as you coming down M Street. You know, it looked like, it didn't look like low-income housing. So I think uh, the projection is that if everybody could keep their line like that, they would never know that these low-income housing. What are your views about the development that's taking place around the community? I mean, my, my biggest thing is that um, just getting the word out to let the people know that they have to go to these meetings. You know, they have to go to the ANC meetings. You have to go to these different uh, uh, meetings when it's involving your area where you live at. And I don't think enough people realize how important it is to actually be at these meetings. Because, you know, your voice do count. But if you don't attend these meetings, the bulldozers will be coming. And, and, and I find it, in, you know, the people that I grew up with, you know, uh, that live on this property, a lot of them just don't attend the meetings. You know, I mean, if you don't attend the meetings, the agenda will get done. And the, and the whole agenda is to bring the bulldozers in. And so we can't wait until the bulldozers come, and then we want to hold these rallies, these press conferences, when you haven't attended any meetings. I mean, uh, that's my biggest thing is that, you know, even five years ago, when they were talking about the Wolf Project, and, and things like that, you know, I, I didn't see too many people from, you know, King Greenleaf, uh, South Fax Gardens or anywhere in these meetings, voicing their opinion, you know, wh what they want for their community. I mean, now, the you know, they're talking about the bulldozers, so you want to rally the troops. And, and, that's, that, and that's my biggest thing about my people. You know, we don't take these meetings seriously. Well, what are your feelings about the plans to demolish? Well, I mean, I, I have, um, back in the 80s, when I was living in uh, 1200 Delaware Avenue, actually, uh, Marion Burry, actually, uh, my building was uh, on the block to bring uh, senior citizens. And so we had to move. That was in 1983. We was one of the last families to move out, out of 1200. And so we was fortunate enough to get a place right here on uh, Delaware Avenue right across from Landsberg Park. And it became a senior, senior citizen home. But before that, they re redeveloped James Creek. James Creek and South, some James Creek, James Creek. And they did a, a they did a move in place where they actually took, you know, the families, they, they did a section by section where some of the families moved in, in, in King Greenleaf Garden Apartments. They moved on this side. They moved some in South Fact. 
That way the family still stayed intact, the kids still stayed in school, you know, everybody still knew each other. And so once they finished, uh, developed one part of uh, James Creek, they just moved the families back. And then they started on the other part. And, and I wouldn't have a problem with, with that type if they decide they wanted to uh, redevelop 1200, 203, uh, King Greenleaf God. I mean, I was just walking around the day and looking at how many vacant units they have available. I mean, that plan will work because, I mean, just sitting outside at night around this area, you know, you, just, you see the rest. I mean, rats are everywhere, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, it's just infested with them. And I don't think, you know, people need to be living like that. I mean, these places are fairly old. Um, but, I mean, if, if they decide, but I just want to keep the families in the neighborhood because I think they, they need a makeover. Yeah. Well, um, what is it that people can do? This is, I think, the last question. What is it that you think people can do to help improve the community and, and, and save the housing or... Create an arrangement like the one that you're describing, which is well, more Well, I think just first, you know, you have some that have uh, kids on the lease that maybe 18, 19, uh, send them to an apprenticeship program. Uh, actually, housing can actually, you know, you know, they have a problem with coming and fixing uh, water leaks, where you have, you know, kids or someone on the property that can actually come in, they certify, you know, they can fix the leak because what happens. You know, housing don't come and fix the leaks. Then the leaks turn into something else. It becomes mold, and next thing you have a bigger problem. You know, you, you fix the problem as it goes. I mean, we I know, I know how the government works. You know, you, you start off with a, with something small, and next thing you know, it's so big. You know, then you're forced to move out. You have sewage back up and things like that. But housing should have a program in place where they actually you have kids 18 or over. They can get in this program where you know, they can do electrical, plumbing, or whatever. And so they don't have to spend so much money to bring a plumber out or electrician out. You have the electricians right there on the property. Uh, but I know another thing, you know, people are saying, well, you know, when these kids get these jobs and they own the lease, you know, the rent goes up. Uh, and you know, that was one of the things that a lot of the kids, uh, uh, parents had adjusted to me because you know, I try to get a lot of them jobs through different programs, and first thing they say, well, they gonna go up on my, you know, my mother's lease, mm -hmm. and um, and I was told that, you know, no, they don't do that. They just adjust it just a little, you know. But the thing is, is that we have to teach these kids once they get 18 and over that, hey, you have to pay bills. Um, and so I think a program, apprenticeship program, or something, that way they can help out with the with the house. I mean, you. You can take your place just like you own a home. Because if I, you know, I own, own my own townhouse and something go wrong, you know, I'm calling someone up to come to fix it. You know, uh, yeah, that's what I think. The house should have some kind of program in place where if you're 18 and over, you can get in this apprenticeship program for housing through housing and um, help with some of the uh, problems that housing has. Mm 